This is your WFHR Daily News Roundup for locally grown radio 97.5 FM and 1320 AM and West Country 105.5 FM WIRI in Wisconsin Rapids. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Donald Trump campaigns in Wisconsin today. He's using an off day in his New York hush money trial to stump in Waukesha. Trump says the trial is just a ploy to keep him on the sidelines. That's exactly what they want. They don't want me on the campaign trail. But it's a real a real disgrace. And the whole world is watching. It's a disgrace to New York. Trump is accused of falsifying business records to cover up payments to a porn star. A new poll finds the race for Wisconsin's presidential votes is tight. The Emerson College survey finds 47% of registered voters support Donald Trump, while 45% back President Biden when the two go head-to-head. With third-party candidates, Trump comes out ahead 45-40. to A new poll shows a close race for U.S. Senate in Wisconsin. The Emerson College survey says 46% back incumbent Democrat Tammy Baldwin, while 43% support Republican challenger Eric Hovde. 1,000 registered voters were polled from April 25th through the 29th. Deaths in the workplace are increasing again in Wisconsin. 125 people died at work in Wisconsin in 2022. That's according to a new report from the National AFL-CIO looking at workplace deaths across the country. Last year's death rate was the highest in Wisconsin in six years. Union leaders are calling on employers to double down on worker safety. Another small college in Wisconsin falls on hard times. Alverno College in Milwaukee is cutting costs in the face of financial challenges. The Catholic Liberal Arts College for Women says it will likely reimagine some programs and cut faculty and staff positions over the next two months. One in five Americans age 50 and older has no retirement savings. That's according to a new study from the AARP. Jim Flaherty is with AARP Wisconsin. He says while it's wise to save for retirement, it's not always easy. A lot of times because they're just trying to get by and they do have to live paycheck to paycheck. But if you can live with a little bit less from your paycheck every week, that will sure grow. Some states have state-operated retirement saving systems, but not Wisconsin. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. For WFHR and WIRI News, I'm Melissa Kay. The Nakusa School District is receiving $25,000 to build a fab lab. They are among 18 Wisconsin school districts awarded grants to train students in science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, otherwise known as STEAM. They'll learn skills to prepare them for careers in advanced technologies. The funds will be used to build fabrication laboratories. To receive a grant, districts must provide matching funds equal to half of the award. As a result, the schools and the state this year will invest at least $750,000 in STEAM education in K-12 schools throughout Wisconsin. American Legion Post 9 is having their poppy drive this Friday, May 3rd. They'll be at the Beer and Mill from 6 to 7 a.m., quality food locations on both Baker Drive and West Grand Avenue from 9 to 5, and Pick and Save from 9 to 5. You can stop down to thank a veteran and make a donation while supplies last. Blood drives are scheduled in Wisconsin Rapids later this month. You can mark your calendar for May 20th from 2 to 7 and May 21st from 10 to 3. These will be at the former East Junior High School in Room 111. You can call 1-800-280-4102 to make an appointment. The DNR announces their annual Warden Staff Awards for Public Safety, and Warden Adam Hanna received the Off-Highway Vehicle Officer of the Year Award. Hired in 2008, Warden Hanna displayed a high degree of passion for protecting and enhancing our natural resources and those who enjoy them. Hanna has several key strengths woven into his program for Clark County. One of his greatest is a passion for off-highway vehicle enforcement. Clark County continues to be a destination for ATV, UTVs, off-highway motorcycles, and snowmobilers nationwide. Hanna constantly engages with operators, and he specializes in working with the public to ensure everyone gets home safely. Wisconsin's inland fishing opener is this weekend, Saturday, May 4th. Anglers should expect good conditions when they take to the waters for the opener. The Wisconsin DNR says fisheries statewide are good. After an abnormally mild winter, ice was off Wisconsin waters the earliest in recorded history. Experts say walleye will be hungry after their spring spawning and suggest that pan fishing anglers target areas of the lake with the warmest water and near areas with new aquatic plant growth. The best spot for walleye close by is shore fishing along County Highway A below the Nakusa Dam. 
panfish, bass, and northern pike can be found in Nepco Lake. Remember, all Wisconsin residents and non-residents over the age of 16 are required to purchase a fishing license. Unlike other counties, there are no changes to the bag and length limit in Wood County. The statewide bag limit is three walleye or sauger per day on all inland waters. Lincoln Street is currently closed near the WRPS district office. If you need to access the old East Junior High School building where the office is located, you'll need to park on 6th Street or in the 6th Street parking lot and walk around to the main entrance on Peach Street. For the Tech Department or Central Oaks office, walk around to the Lincoln Street entrance. Everyone says their dog is special, but a puppy looking for a home at a Kenosha clinic is truly one of a kind. Here's Stuart J. Waddles with the story. Bella is at the Wisconsin Humane Society location in Kenosha. The puppy was born with five legs with an extremely rare condition called polymelia. X-rays have revealed that Bella has two femurs, two tibias, two fibulas, and nine toes on her hind leg. Despite her unique anatomy, the six-month-old puppy is said to be happy and in good health. The special canine can be seen on the Kenosha Campus website. And that's what you need to know. I'm Melissa Kay, WFHR and WIRI News. The Brewers get into a brawl. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers beat the Rays 8-2, but it wasn't easy. Top of the 8th, Tampa Bay's Jose Siri at the plate as both benches cleared for a fight on Valley Sports, Wisconsin. On the ground, first base, Hoskins flips to Uribe. One up, one down, Siri retired. Uribe and Siri exchanging some words, and here we go. Oh boy, that's not what you want to see. And here we go. Pins empty. Abner Uribe, as soon as he got to first base, Siri kept going. Now, early in the game, Brewers pitcher Freddie Peralta ejected, along with manager Pat Murphy, thrown out for a second night in a row. I'm not, I'm not sure what went on with all that. I really am not. You know, all I can say is I just, I'm glad nobody got seriously hurt. You know, this, there's a lot of emotion in the game, and I, I think the way the game ended last night, there's a lot of emotion, and I think it, it blends itself to more emotion. NBA, the Bucks overcome some obstacles and beat the Pacers 115-92 to to stay alive three games to two. Doc Rivers on the win. Uh, I, I didn't know we were going to win on that. You never know as a coach, you know, but I did walk off the floor and I said, we're, we're coming tonight. And I told our coaches that I said, I don't know if we're going to win, but we're not we're coming to play and win tonight. You can feel it. You can feel in the preparation how locked in. That was not a team walking through a walkthrough thinking this was, this was it. That's a team thinking they can win and, and, and it showed. That's Doc Rivers with Sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Ethan Hawke had nothing but praise for Training Day co-star Denzel Washington. Hawke recalled his time at the 2002 Oscars while appearing on Who's Talking to Chris Wallace. When Hawke found out he had come up short in his Best Supporting Oscar bid for his role in the film Iris, Washington leaned over to him and said, It's better that you didn't win. Losing is better. Hawk added Washington was trying to tell him, you don't want an award to improve your status. You want to improve the awards status. Easy to say for Washington, a guy who has two Academy Awards. There are no rules to being romantic, at least for Selena Gomez and her boyfriend, Benny Blanco. Gomez shared on social media that her music producer, Sweetie, left her a note on a piece of tissue paper while she was taking a nap that said, I love you, sleep well, I made you steak. Sources say Gomez was overwhelmed with emotion until she went to use the bathroom and realized they were out of toilet paper. John Bon Jovi cannot seem to stop talking about how much he cheated in his marriage. The rumors apparently upset his wife, Dorothea, but he still can't keep his trap shut. The singer says his wife has always been there for him when he's fallen. The couple has been together since high school. The rock star and writer of many overwhelmingly mediocre songs said during a primetime special on ABC, he's a rock star, not a saint, and then alluded to having hundreds of girls while married, saying he got away with murder. Hey, idiot. You didn't get away with it if you're confessing on national TV. Deadline.com reports that Tilda Swinton will join Colin Farrell in the cast of The Ballad of a Small Player. The film tells the story of a gambler hiding out and laying low in the Far East who meets a kindred spirit. Filming for the Netflix production will start in Asia this summer. You can also catch Farrell in the film noir series Sugar on Apple TV. Comedian actress Amy Schumar put a positive spin on the Internet's reaction to her, quote, puffy face. Schumar says it made her insecure at first, but also let her know that something was wrong. Schumar announced in February that she was suffering from Cushing syndrome. The condition can be caused by too much stress, which can release cortisol, making one's face puffy and raising one's blood pressure. Schumar was grateful she caught it early and says she knows her fans will love her, puffy or not. Who doesn't enjoy a movie love scene between a doughy middle-aged man and a young pretty actress? (laughs) 
probably just about everyone, much to the dismay of actor Martin Freeman. The 53-year-old Fargo actor addressed his intimate scenes with 21-year-old Jenna Ortega in Miller's Girl, a dark comedy in which Ortega's character seduces Freeman's character. The reaction on social media was mostly negative. I know, shocking. Miller's Girl is available on demand. Check it out. Being grossed out is a great way to keep the weight off. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Partly cloudy today. We'll get to 65 for a high this afternoon. The wind out of the west at around 15 to 25. Tonight, mostly cloudy with some showers after midnight, our low 48. Tomorrow, cloudy with rain, a few thunderstorms. Rain could be heavy at times with a high near 58. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Outside now, it's 53. That's your WFHR and WIRI Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WFHR.com or Wiscountry. That's W-I-S-Country.com.